The midges are really bad here. Right, day, what are we on? Day four. four. four today. Day four is slightly shorter, 32, 34K, just over 20 miles. As you know, I struggled massively yesterday, but we're here, we're gonna go for it. Jeff is kicking me out the door. Totally. And if you run faster than four miles an hour, the midges can't get you. That is true, that is true, so. Oh God. <laughs> Onwards and upwards. See you later. See you later, buddy. Bye. Yeah, the midges are really bad here, so I've got my got my hair net on. I look fetching, I know. Um, so yeah, 20, 20 odd miles today. Nowhere near as far as yesterday. Half the distance of yesterday. I have no idea how I convinced my body to start moving again on day four of the Cape Wrath Ultra. But somehow I managed to get going and we were straight into a climb out of the midge fest that was Achna Shellach. Of course, I made sure to take things very easy for the first few kilometers, as I had been doing for the last couple of days. But it wasn't long before I caught up with tentmate Jay, who had stayed ahead of me for the whole of day three. So, uh, day four. Yeah. Come on then. Paul, well, we just climbed out of camp. We came over and down that mountain yesterday. We climbed over that mountain in the distance. I know, it was awful. But that's what we did yesterday. You can do that, you can do anything. Easier, easier today. Just, yeah, day four, um, tired legs, nursing myself through today. Um, get back to camp in a decent hour today. We got back very late last night. Just yeah. something that we can uh, manage the resources, get the body back for tomorrow. Let's do it. Yep. That's a view behind me, isn't it? It's a lot cooler today, which is making it a lot easier. Eight kilometers in, just at the top of the first climb. So we've climbed about five, 600 meters and one hour, 42 minutes. I mean, obviously my, my legs are really tired, but in myself, I feel so much better than I did yesterday. After the initial climb out of camp, the ground had leveled off somewhat, and I'd been able to run a good section of the course before starting the climb up to the pass. Admiring the incredible scenery from the top, I felt very happy just to be moving, and the cooler temperatures were definitely helping. Very rocky descent here on the first climb. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Uh, much better than I was yesterday, thank okay. you. I'm really looking forward to the video that you're going to make. It might take me a while, I'll have a lot of footage to get through. Why are you here, Lucas? Uh, I want to challenge my limits. On the first day I had uh, some troubles with my knee. Yeah. During kilometer 21. And I started walking. Um, day two was better. I walked the whole thing yesterday. I knew that I had to run to make the finish line. Yeah. So I ran a little bit. And you did it? And I did it, so. Awesome. So far, so good. Well done, Lucas. Thanks. Just over 11 kilometers in, uh, we're just making our way down to the first checkpoint. We've got three and a half K to go to that checkpoint. The only checkpoint today. Coming down off the pass, there were definitely one or two moments I needed to check the map on my watch as there were some sections of aimless wandering over the heather with no discernible path. Do your hair, come on, make yourself look nice. Drinking tea. I wish I had a cup of tea. You can have tea and chips at the end. Lovely. Okay, that is the uh, checkpoint. Well, we are here at the checkpoint now. Um, it's 10.30 in the morning, two hours ahead of cutoff, and it, we've three hours and three minutes to do 15K. Not much point in standing around, is there? No, okay, we'll just carry on. Enjoying it. See you later. <laughs> 
no aid stations here, you know. No bananas, no uh, chocolate, no coffee, no latte, no ice creams, no sympathy. no sympathy. Get on with it. Stop moaning. Oh, I tell you what, we're in such a better mood than we were yesterday. What do you think of that then, James? Beautiful, huh? You, I'm looking at the guy in front. Oh, I was looking at the mountain. I was looking at the guy in front who's running up the hill that we're no, no. slowly slogging up. Oh. <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, not bad. Good, good. I'm on a holiday now, aren't I? Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> James had unfortunately been timed out of the main race on day three, so was now part of the Cape Wrath Explorer, where runners can choose to do shorter distances each day as non-competitive participants. By now, I was really starting to enjoy myself. My legs felt fine and the landscape was immense. Amazing scenery here, isn't it? very rock strewn path so it's much slower to go along and uh, Fernando from Portugal just passed me and he said are you not cold and I noticed he's got his rain jacket on then I noticed there's quite a few other people wearing their base layer or their rain jacket and I'm thinking well I'm not cold this is like a, a summer's day hi guys hi. hey it's like a blustery day on the North Yorkshire moors or something. This isn't cold. But I guess it can change quickly and you always need to be careful and aware. But I've got everything I need in my backpack. If I do get cold, I can easily quickly put it on. But I'm definitely not, not cold at the moment. It's blowing, but it's not freezing cold at all. Have I gone on about how not cold it is? 21 kilometers in four hours, 27 minutes, we have 13K left to do, which is pretty good, isn't it? And we'll be home before three o'clock, hopefully this afternoon, plenty of time to sort my stuff out. This old habit's got a hold on me, won't let go of me. So happy it's got a grip on me Won't set me free, won't leave me be I can shake it to go it's getting a bit boring this now because we're just trudging through marsh and we have been for the past four kilometers five kilometers maybe and it's taken us 15 minutes per kilometer but it's just grim I can shake it. okay me and James are on the descent into camp 4k to go and we are happy we've had a bit of a miserable time on the uh, marshes they're not called marshes are they what are they called what was it bog and whatever it was yeah. at the top of the mountain there but now we're on this really quite runnable path as long as i don't trip on a stone while i'm talking into the camera but yeah it's been a good day James? Yeah, awesome. Nice to be back running after yesterday's heat. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, feeling good now. Do you know what? I think that has made a big difference. Although it's lovely when it's blue skies and sunshine, it really does sap your energy when it's hot. And look at this, look at this lovely view. James and I had run and trudged most of the second half together and we fair flew down the last hill to camp at Kinlochu, full of beans. Despite the change in the weather, in fact more likely because of it, we had ended up having our best day thus far in the Scottish Highlands. Got a mile to go. Down at the bottom of the mountain now, 
just on this nice hard packed track lovely to run on feeling fine i mean i'll be happy to get in but yeah feeling great so just get some good sleep tonight and we'll be on again tomorrow Got that latte for me yet? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so that the frother's broken. Right. It's you know. Right. I think we'll probably going over the bridge and yeah. there's, there's some tape. Okay. Day four of the Cape Breath Ultra is pretty much done. Hi guys. Loads of midges in this camp. So I've got my hair net out already. Here we go. All right, bud. Cheers, Jeff. Hi, bud. Oh yeah, okay. I crossed the finish line just after 3 p.m., smiling this time rather than crying. big news in camp we've just been told there's a virus a stomach bug virus about so we've got to be particularly careful about sanitizing hands and washing and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> so that's a little bit concerning and I did notice yesterday there's some people um, you know we've got we've got these blue tents that we all sleep in and there's like eight people to a tent and the people who have this virus have all been quarantined in green tents and I saw some green tents yesterday. Fingers crossed none of us catch it. Uh, Jay hasn't caught it yet. James hasn't got it yet. Have you got it? I don't have it yet. I'm gonna wash my hands before I do anything. I don't even know the um, symptoms yet. What's in there? Private medical matters. <laughs> Jay's private medical matters. Jay's privates. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday's tablets I saw. Wednesday's tablets. Getting old. It's the dementia pills kicking in again. Look, Sam put them in a little tub for me so I get the oh, dose right. We've just finished recording a podcast as well. So go and listen to, if, you've ha if you haven't listened to it already, now, go now, once this video's finished, go and listen to Trail and Error, the podcast, which will probably be about six years long because we're doing one every evening after the run. We did do a very good episode with your wife as well. Turning it up. Coming up in episode 6 of the Cape Wrath Ultra. So that first 7k was a bit of a cheat. It's very cold, very windy. Something horrible is on the horizon. Now, have I missed the turn? Where's the turn? I'm waiting for the sting in the tail. There it is, there's camp. All the way around there. Oh my goodness. 